Hello and how are you? My name is Mohin Nubarak and I welcome you to our other video of creating a complete e-commerce web application. In the previous classes, we were able to list our product and also be able to display that product into its single page. In today's class, I'm going to show you how you can add a product to cart and then go ahead and preview your cart and then a customer will be also able to do what? To proceed to the checkout and fill out the form and also the for the customer to be able to choose the shipping option that they need and also proceed with the card and payment and also uh, previewing the order and confirming the order then also tracking the what the order as well as viewing the order details that is what you're going to cover today the cart management of e-commerce web application so i hope you're ready to do this with me if you are, then let's go straight to the code and resume with from where I stopped in the previous video. Okay, so as you can see, I've already opened my project. So I hope if you if you are following, you know everything about this project at this moment. If you are not following, then please go ahead and watch our previous videos so that you can be on the same page with us. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to first work on the products. You know our project, I already started our project. Our project just had only two products and they seem not to be relevant. So I'm going to teach you how you can generate the dummy product because creating dummy data in your project is really very, very crucial on the project representation. So I'm going to show you how we can generate some dummy product and also use them to do what to perform the remaining parts of the part of the project. So let's go ahead and generate the dummy products or the products are used to, it, to practice first of all i'm going to go to my database and delete the existing products that are already there so i'll just simply come to my local host and then come to our project database which is this one i think the shop this guy and then i come to product table so this is the product table so what i'm going to do i'm going to delete everything here so delete everything you can of course select everything here and say delete or oh, the other way if you want to reset a table there's an sql called truncate okay so if you say truncate products means that you're formatting a table and it looks like new so we have truncated our products table and there's nothing right now so if i come here and i try to refresh our project you'll see there is nothing okay there's no more product so let's go ahead and generate at least uh, 15 products that you're going to use for practicing so to do that i'm going to go to my project and i'm going to come to functions and i'm going to create a special function for creating these fake products okay so how shall we do that we we'll just simply come to functions and then say i'm going to create a newly function that i'm going to call my faker oh can call it products faker products or can say fake what fake products <laughs> generate <laughs> okay so i can delete this guy so this function i'm going to do nothing inside it but generating what generating uh, fake products that you're going to use just for for practice okay so what is not happening i have here something that i have to rub this guy so let me die here and say generating okay so let's go ahead and call this function let's go ahead and call this function from uh, home page or anywhere and we see how we can generate these products so i'll go come here to my files and come to the index file okay the index file here and i'm going to come here on top here and immediately after including functions i'm calling this guy to generate for us the products okay and then i can put here die and say done so i'll save and if i come and refresh right now on the top of our project i should see generating so it means that we have successfully called the function that is going to help us generate dummy products so to generate a dummy product of course we are going to first need the parameters that we need for a product. These are the parameters. Okay. 
so i'll copy them from database and then come and put here some temporary comment and paste them there okay so first of all you need the id so this id will uh, automatically generate itself of course it will be auto incrementing okay so now we need the product name so it means that we're going to create a what a function that's going to i mean we're going, we're going to create a loop that's going to loop into the number of products that we want and then provide this information pro to create the product so i'm going to just gonna say for reach and then uh, sorry sorry not for reach i can say a for loop and then uh initially i say i is equal to zero i is less than uh, 15 or can say i less than 20 so i'm going to generate 20 product and i say i plus plus okay then after doing that then i start creating one product by one so i can say pro and then the first parameter i pass the name of the product so equals to so i'm going to create an array that i'll be randomizing and then automatically pick the product's name okay so i can come here and i create um an an array called names equals to and then that's where i'm going to store my temporary products names so i can come and get some idea from names for example if i go maybe to amazon okay i just want to pick the product name ideas okay so i can go to amazon and pick some random product name ideas let me come maybe to clothes since we are dealing in clothes uh, so you see there is this name oh my god i've just clicked on it okay no problem there is this name so i'll double click on it and then put here under one of the options here uh -huh. so i'll come and put here comma and create another so let me go ahead and copy another name of a product this guy i don't know i don't need to first click on it uh -huh. so i can copy this guy okay it's called kelvin kane women's put here and put a comma here so if it has an apostrophe like this one you can uh, eliminate it like that so let me go ahead and get some random product name uh, random products names let me do this for less than one minute okay but you can do better so you can as well create yours but yours can do what you can do it manually so let me come and get a strange totally different product uh, let me come here and get another product that is totally different uh, let me get this one okay i think those are enough okay i think those products are enough for us to i mean these products name are enough for us to for practicing after all it's not the real data okay so that's it but you can still go ahead and add more and more and more and more okay so that's it now after having uh, at least four names there so the next thing that we're going to do you're going to shuffle these names so we put here our loop you see this is our loop so inside this loop i'm going to shuffle the names so this is how we shuffle the array by writing a function called shuffle and the password you want to shuffle so i'm shuffling the names and here i want to initialize with the name in a position of one for example so it will randomize every loop and get for us a name in the first position in the second position which is one so after doing that the next thing i'm going to sorry okay so after doing that uh the next thing what do we need we need the name the name is done buying price uh so you can also randomize the buying price by putting maybe uh buying price you can also do the same thing but you can just put maybe random between 1000 and maybe 5000 so it will create for me some random number between 1000 and 5000 but you can do a better pricing than this okay so price is done the selling price let me do the same thing and then we come to description 
so the description you can write your simple lorem ipsum like this create a new file and write the word lorem lorem it's not creating it's going to be in a html file for example let me come here and put lorem like this and then duplicate so after i'm going to come here and create maybe something called description description equals to and i put that lorem ipsum just for testing so i'll come to this guy where there's description and i put the lorem ipsum that we just passed so after doing that what next we have photos okay so here in photos is also interesting you know we have a list of photos json okay so you have to organize them also properly in a way that uh, we maintain the same what the same structures so if you still remember uh, we, when you are creating photos we save the thumbnail and what and uh, and uh, and the main photo name what you call the src so i'm going to create a loop that is going to generate for us what some photo names so let's go ahead and do that so i just simply come and say for each loop and the i mean for loop okay and then i can begin from one up to maybe uh 20. so I, i'm going to create some images that are ranging from one up to 20. so i can call this guy photos equals to nothing by default and then after i come and say photos i mean sorry i can say now maybe a single pick and the path of what of thumbnail and i put so let us first see how we saved did we save it as thumb or let us see where there is get uh product photo it is src and thumbnail so i can just simply come and say thumb equals uh maybe uh i so this is the i of course beginning from one i dot jpg jpg okay and then after we come and collect the src src it can also be the same okay uh so i have to put here do it because there i will have not touched attached it okay so after doing that i'm going to get these photos so it means that here i'll have added some photos i'll have to add them like this and then i append them to peak so i'll have had the, those photos which are ranging from one up to nine with extension of dot jpg so i'm going to first get my photos and put them in a folder where they expected to be so you see product photos um i want to see whether there's product photo uh is rc i want to see where we're uploading the products exactly i think we are putting them in what in uploads or i don't remember so we are putting them i think in uploads here okay so i'm going to put here some photos which are having name from uh, one up to what one up to 20. so this template this theme comes with some exemplary photos that you can find under under what under assets i mean under images img and then under catalog i mean under shop and then under catalog that's where you can find these products photos so let me go ahead and reveal them and they see where they are and then put them in a place that i want so here they are they are ranging up to 70 <laughs> 72 so i can copy all of them and then come and put them in a folder that i want i want them to be in my uploads folder so i'll come and look for my uploads folder and i open it and then i paste there these products okay copy them here come and paste click here and paste 
So I've just dragged and dropped them. Okay, so after doing that, uh, the next thing is now to make use of these products, okay? So that's why I was looping as I'm adding .jpg. So after doing that now, it means that I can now add this product. I can now append it to these photos. I mean, I can now append that picture to those photos array. So now when I'm determining or when I'm getting the photos, uh, the products I'll have to shuffle also photos. I'm randomizing them. And then where there is the word photos, where is it anyway? It is here, photos. I'm going to say photos equals to JSON encode. So I'm encoding the JSON of what? Of photos here that I've just randomized and I paste it here. So the next thing is what? Is um, catalog ID. So catalog ID also it has to be one of the IDs that are uh, already existing in our system so i'm going to create here uh like what another array for just getting the id that are in the system so catalog and then i say so i can come and look at the system and look at our current ids that we have okay so in categories we have three four and five okay these others are main okay so i'm going to put three four and five as default we have category equals to three uh -huh, another one is sorry three category dot id equals three okay sorry 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 we just create a categories array and then put here we have three and four and five so meaning those are the among the uh categories that we have then here i'll have also to shuffle them so that they should not look similar and then after so after now i need to set the category id okay so to set the category id i'll just simply come and say category underscore id so after doing that i'll have to get the what the ids from here that's something that i've shuffled this guy Okay, so I'll just simply come and say sh shuffle I say shuffle the categories I've already shuffled categories I just simply say maybe get the categories and then item from zero it can be any number that is within the limit and then what's remaining user id the one who has just submitted this product let us keep it simple let's say maybe it's the super admin whose id is one so after doing that uh let's go ahead and now save okay so um now we're going to insert i think everything is done now we're going to insert this data into the database okay so to do that we're going to just simply come and call a function that inserts data into the database which is db insert i think db insert this guy okay so we specify the database and also the data so we'll just go ahead and call this function from here so after doing that so the user id by default we make it one because you know at, at least there is that administrator who has the user id one so we call the function db insert and we pass the table name which is products and then we pass the um, data which is inside the pro so after uh that's all <laughs> let's see if we can populate some products into our database 
so i'll come and command this guy and then after i will now go ahead and call my function i mean i'll go ahead and process the refresh the the, the page so it's done uh, with no error so let's go ahead and now remove this guy which is here okay so i'm going to come to main function and comment the faker and also remove this guy that's done okay so let's refresh as you should see let us go now to our shop page and see if we have some products or oh, it's not insert i don't see any product there let's try to go to products and see if there's something there's not something there okay let's see what could be the could have been a problem uh-huh so we have db insert let us put here die okay die to show that uh, we are in the right place okay and then put a semicolon here and then maybe i can put here maybe done okay let's go ahead and refresh and see go back to home you see we are here so db insert maybe it did not insert the products i don't know oh yeah let's go ahead and see what what might have happened mm, db insert refresh come and see if the products are already entered in in the table not yet okay let's find out why so db insert we go to the function the function is here uh -huh. let us see if it is reaching this point so debugging is part of programming so let us see if it's reaching this point uh-huh refresh it's reaching the point let us see uh they're saying that has value all that to see if it is reaching this point here um which is reaching the point uh, let us see the sq that is being generated okay so i just simply say die the SQL that is being generated, which is insert into products, then the name of the product. Oh yeah, I think the problem is uh, those apostrophes. Eh? Those apostrophes in the product's name maybe they are the problem. So you have to do my SQL string escape. So let us see how we can do that. My SQL. I mean my S my my sqli real real escape string this function uh, it's going to help us do what to 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 prepare our 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 sql so it can be free from what from sql injection mm -hmm. so this is it mm, you just call it you know what and the connection okay so here when the value is a integer we'll just simply call the connection so this connection need to be on top here so it's to be on top here so it is my sql i mean real escape string okay so we just put real escape ah just call the guy i mean you have to attach it on um, the connection and then you let me remove this value here and put it here so i want to do nothing but just repair the value itself okay let me show what i'm doing to, uh, what i'm doing i'm going to first undo everything and be like the way it was okay so this is how it was like this okay it was like this now before i save this value here i'll have to first escape its string like this so i say value let me, let me say um, 
v equals my sql okay value value equals connection then my sql escape string and then uh, we insert that value here so this one will help us from sql injection let us see if everything is now better refresh okay it has been escaped where necessary let me now try to run the sql i have come and check in products uh, still products are not there i don't know why uh, let's refresh and see insert into products then chik -chik 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 -chik, the products are there then the values oh you see there's this is not escaped see it's not escaped so why is it not escaping uh -huh, so this is the value first time uh, uh, let me also add it here i think yeah so refresh uh, now you can see, let's see if it is being escaped uh, i see this guy is not escaped this is supposed to be escaped hmm? this one oh this one is escaped can you see let us try to save and see if everything is okay now refresh come and refresh check products are not going there why ah uh, let me die here and say failed now uh, this is success success and i die here and say failed okay let's do that and see failed so if you want to see the reason why just come to this connection you'll find the error and just simply put print underscore r the connection let me put here the echo print uh print tag we are just fixing the problem eh? so fixing this is part of the programming so if i come and refresh you can see the error 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 number this you have an error in the sql syntax that corresponds to write this 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 uh fix the problem and uh, the problem was i was writing a wrong json file uh, whereby i was i was truncating i was adding a what a I was adding here I was adding uh, a string on it on itself after adding I was just doing like this instead so I was doing like this that was the problem so I have to remove this guy that you escape the string alone and then you also insert it separately that is the only miss that I was doing yeah ah that's that was painful okay it's okay now i'll fix the issue now even though an sql comes with a comma this sql string escape will do what will escape it so with that said so if i run this sql i mean this function it is going to generate for me uh dummy products okay it's going to generate for me dummy products uh 20 of them 20 dummy products so let me go ahead and delete everything in my database and we do it afresh so I'll come to our database and truncate again the products delete everything in the products and it's deleted then let's come to index and call the function which we call fake product generator so when it calls it's going to generate some fake products so when i'm at shop it is not showing anything let's go to home so it can be called so it has been called right now so if we come here you see we have some products okay we have products listed into our shop that is very nice okay we have products listed there so what i'm going to do right now i'm going to uh, remove this function so that it should not run be run multiple times and we end up having so many products <coughs> that we will not even need so i'm just using 20 products of them so let me comment maybe in future when we'll need it we'll use it so those kind of functions are important for you to generate fake products that you can use when you're demonstrating your project to the client as well as when you're uh, creating your projects 
okay or practicing or testing so i've generated those default products you see they are there uh, only that here i put so many pictures eh? i put so many pictures in a way that i had put almost all the 20 pictures in the what in the same product so i can go ahead and maybe limit these pictures eh? so let us go to single product page uh well, let us come here where there is get products photos uh in the function where there is get uh product photos here i'm just going to limit and send a minimum uh here just and decode so i'm going to loop and limit them eh? so i just simply say uh for each for each okay so i'll put here the product okay i'll put the objects what you call the object so i can first create a temporary one like this and then i create this one with an empty array and then I start adding them in this empty array by just simply putting this guy and then push value. Okay, so if I save right now, uh, we'll uh, now I can put the limit now. I can say int i equals to maybe four or zero. Okay, now remove the int <laughs> and then come and say if if i is greater than maybe three or let us say four you should stop from there so it will bring maximum of four products uh, photos so refresh um what is not happening uh, 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 what is not happening we, are uh, we have to loop through this empty this empty one i mean this one what we've kept date so now we should have only four products to show so here i uh, have to increase i plus plus otherwise it will never meet the condition so if i refresh now i'll see i have only four products eh? photos uh maybe the other thing here i can also shuffle them <laughs> I can also shuffle them because they may end up becoming the same. So uh, they already shuffled, I think. So there we go. Now let us go ahead and do now the real business that brought us today. Uh, adding this product to cart. Okay, adding the product to cart. So we are going to use session to act as our cart. So when someone adds a product, we'll be keeping this product into what into a session. And uh, now, what you're going to do right now, you're going to, when someone clicks on a product, you want someone when he clicks here, he should be taken to that file that is going to process the session. Or we can do this kind of a form in a way that here we put the quantity, someone to specify, and this will become like kind of a form someone to submit on that particular what? This particular form. And in that form, that's what we'll be doing the process of adding that product to what? To cut. I think you understand what I'm talking about. Now let's go ahead and do it. So I'll begin from here. Where there is size, we are going to change it to quantity. So I'll come and search it. Uh, of course, size it is here on the product page. So let's go ahead and call this guy quantity. Uh, quantity. Quantity. And then we can, uh, we can now have this select in form of quantity so maybe or we can change it to what to into a normal input as in uh, input so that someone should enter the quantity that they want in any value so input type is going to be number and then we give it a class of of course form form what if you give it a class of forms, let's see how it will look like. Okay, so let me go ahead and comment this because I don't need it now. Let me go ahead and comment it. So come and save, come and refresh. Uh, we have, okay, so quantity it is here. Only that I can come and call this one form control. 
okay it's called form control uh, so someone will enter the quantity there and then add to cut so to do that now let's go ahead and um, and uh, and do what and add this product to what to cut so quantity 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 is going to be submitted uh, uh let us make it required so that someone will have to specify how many pieces they want uh, required okay save now i'm going it is a form here i'm going to submit it to a certain field that will handle that i will not do it get i may not do it as get or i can do it as get if i want to okay so that even someone will be browsing a product uh, when they are submitting i want to see if this is feasible so let us say someone is on shop and want to submit a product so I'll put here you'll first enter the quantity from this section and then submit i don't know whether that would be good practice okay so and then submit this one as kind of a form so let's go ahead and uh, submit this product in what now in our, in our project i mean in our cart so what you're going to do you're going to create a, a file that is going to be processing uh cut we're going to call it uh cut add process or i want to call it uh, everything that's about the cut maybe we can call we can start with it with the word cut okay so let me collapse everything here and i'm going to create a new what a new function that is going to add the product to cut so I'll come here and create a new file that I'm going to call cut space process. Okay. And why am I calling it process? Because this isn't just going to do the logic of adding. It will not display anything. That's why I'm calling it process. Add not PHP. So uh, here, this form that is surrounding this that's going to select this guy okay we are going to i think quantity is here so we can remove this quantity the one that we have here just remove that one let us use this quantity so we can decide which quantity so you want someone to add according to your form your project so let me give now these things a name so i'm going to call it uh quantity Okay. Uh, refresh. Now the other guy is gone. So let's put here quantity. Someone will select here, and then submit. Okay. Let's go ahead and specify what someone shall should submit. So one more thing that you have to give this guy a name. Others not be submitted, and let us call it quantity. Okay. So and specify where the form should go. So I'll come here where the form should go and put action. I can say action and put a uh, cut process add dot php so refresh here and then i'll come and add here maybe three pieces and then i submit it is submitting this cut pr add pr process add dot php so that's where we're going to do the whole logic of adding product to cut so first of all let us go ahead and uh, do it so we'll come here to cut process add and then we begin our php and then include our functions once include or require once and we're going to include our functions uh, our functions are inside files stroke functions dot php so we know in that function that php file even the session will be started okay file not found it's supposed to be files not files save refresh everything is okay so in in, in function that php it is where even um, the session is started so let us go ahead and create the cut session so everything under the cut session i mean everything that's going to start the session of cut we're going to be saving it in this thing of cut okay 
so everything that will be here is what will be storing the cart so let us create uh, where how we're going to handle the, the 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 session product so here i'm going to specify the product id right so here i'll be putting uh, the id of a product and then i uh, will be equating it now to the what the product itself here so it's going to be here being the product information is going to be the id of a what of a product so in case someone submitted the product twice we'll do what we will know so one more thing maybe that we need here is now the product id itself so i will come here and put um echo echo and say pre tag and just dump a printer a printer and put a uh, post and see what is being sent into post so if you refresh so you see only the quantity but you don't have the id so let's go ahead and fetch the id too so it means that you have to put here some hidden input that will be uh, submitting the id of a product so let's go ahead and do that i'll come here to the before method so within the form so i'll just put another input another input you can call it hidden i can call it <laughs> uh input okay and then put type to be hidden hidden and then give it value equals to so here i'm going to write some php uh, that's going to fetch the product id that someone is previewing so of course it is this one the word id so i'll go ahead and put here id like this so by doing like that so when someone submits why this guy not being detected when someone submits the product id will also be submitted one more thing don't forget to give it a name okay so i'll give it a name of id so let's go ahead and refresh so when i say maybe three per three items and then say add to cut you see i have the quantity and the i have the product id and the quantity so from here let's go ahead and select now and get the product and get the product so come to functions uh, so we come to cut and then let us get the product so we have what you call db select i think db underscore select which will take the table of course the table is what products and then this db select don't get confused it is a function that we did before okay db select the function that we did to select the product okay so where it will take the condition eh? so where the condition i'm just going to pass the condition is uh, nothing but an sql okay so i'm just going to put here where so that will be the second condition so i'll just put here where id equals to and i pass the id but i've not defined this id so id will be equal to uh post and then the id itself so you can first check if some id is really set or not something like that so here i'll just simply uh substitute the id here so i have to pass like this so where id equals to that so by doing like that i think i'll be able to get what a single product okay so i can just simply say now a pro equals to but i think remember we created a function that gets for us a product eh? get product a special function for getting the product and did we create it here i see it is here so we don't need to suffer yeah, this is a special function so let us use this one we just give it an id only so that's the use of creating functions and remembering that you created functions so if i come here and refresh now i'll be able to see uh, all the product so this is the product we're going to add to what to cut so i'll check if we go to null okay if equal to null let me die here we can redirect we can do die and say die and say uh 
uh, product uh, not found okay uh, yeah so that's it and uh, now let us go ahead and add it to session as I told you we are going to have something like this session you know the sessions already started within functions and then we're going to have a section of cut with a special variable of cut and then next to it we'll put the id of a product to avoid duplicates so i'll come and get this guy and put it here and then inside there i save now this product information the whole product information there like this only maybe the only thing that is remaining is is putting the quantity you know putting the quantity so but i can add it but uh, if i want to to attach it eh? so since this guy is an array this product thing is an array. I can attach there as well the what? The quantity. So since the quantity is coming within the post, so I can put here uh, quantity, which equals to uh, post, and then pass the what? The quantity. So if you want to make sure it's an integer, you can type cast it like this and then they'll make sure it is a what an integer let's refresh ah you see quantity has been added so this will be a single item inside the cut session so after doing that let's go ahead and re redirect the user so i don't know whether i created a function of alert message i think we did let us see if it is there do you have it called alert yes we have it eh? you see this one we've already created this function that will uh, create a message that will be sent to another what to another page okay so let's go ahead and create that message and say alert and then say uh, product added to cut successfully and then pass here success okay uh yeah that's it and then after we have to redirect okay so to redirect i'll direct to the back to the shop so i just simply say header and then i pass location and then i pass shop dot php and then i save so if i come and refresh i'll be back to the shop dot php only that I have written it the bad way. I think a lot it begins with what? With a type and then followed by the message. So the type is success and the message is product added to cut successfully. Refresh. Everything is okay. Uh, come and uh, try this. Put to. So you see, product added to cut successfully. That is beautiful. Okay. So now we need to show the number of products that are added to cut here but i think that one we're going to do it in the next video okay but you see product can be now get added to cut successfully so in the next video now we're going to proceed how to display the product number the number in, in of products in the on in cut here and also displaying the product that are in cut the top three products in cut we display them here and also maybe as well as now uh checking out okay or previewing the cut details and also checking out so that's what we're going to do in the next video so please don't miss uh don't give up keep practicing until you complete we complete everything i'll share the source code <laughs> in one of the videos so keep watching until they die share the source code okay so goodbye and we meet in the next video and don't miss